The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 6, verse 7 to 13. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. The theme of my homily is, We Are Soldiers of Christ. My dear friends, in the first reading, we have been presented with two priests and prophets. They were called by God and sent to go and preach the gospel, the good news. What is the good news? The good news is that we should live uprightly. The good news is that we will be exposed to our vices, and then we can learn to improve. That is why it's the good news. But unfortunately, these two priests did not get along. It was like a scandal. Imagine myself and my grandfather there. Begin to argue how to celebrate the Mass in your presence. <laughs> how will it look like? So the two kings, or rather the two priests and prophets are Amaziah and Amos. That's what we heard in the first reading. So Amaziah was a priest in the northern kingdom. And Amos was sent from the southern kingdom to go and preach in the northern kingdom because Amaziah was not telling the king the truth. He was preaching what we call prosperity gospel. So prosperity gospel is that type of gospel that you will be lying to people. You tell them that even though things are happening that are wrong in the community, you say, don't worry, everything will be fine. It is just because um, of one reason or the other. So you won't tell the king or those who are doing evil that it is evil. Now, in the northern kingdom, the poor were being marginalized. The women were being marginalized. The children were being marginalized by the rich. So when they go to the market, they have inflated the price of goods and services, commodities, and they have no choice because it is the government that has put the price. So the rich will continue to remain richer and the poor will remain poorer. But Amaziah refused to tell the king that it is wrong to stop. That was why God had to send Amos to go and tell the people and the king to stop. But Amaziah did what? He prevented Amos. He said, oh, seer. So it's like a kind of insult. Oh, seer. He too is a seer. So why should you just say that? Oh, seer, go and prophesy in, in Judah. That is where you belong. You don't belong here. This is my territory. 
So my dear friends, as soldiers of Christ, we can also have this type of contention between us. Have you ever seen where a group of Catholics or two Catholics will be disagreeing on a particular teaching of the church, probably in the presence of a non-Catholic? How would the person feel? So as soldiers of Christ, let us learn to accept others. <coughs> because we are all gifted. We have our own gifts. And that person is not coming to take over your position. He's not coming to take over your glory. He is also coming to support your ministry, to support your work. Because we all are working for the same God. We all serve and receive from the same cup on the altar. We all have one baptism. And so it's just a matter of style. Practically, you know my style. If I'm celebrating Mass, I will chant some parts. But not every priest does that. And some of you, you are not used to chant. But are you going to say, no, Father, don't chant? Because you know it's a style and it is part of the worship, the mass. So this is just what we all have to pay attention to. Let us try to support one another as we go out and preach the gospel. We don't need to leave our homes to go out even to preach the gospel, carrying the Bible and the bell and be ringing. We just need to preach the gospel by the content of our character. If we live a good life, if people observe how we react to situations, people will know that this man, this woman has the Holy Spirit operates in a good way and they would like to come close to us. But if we have a bad character, people will run away from us. Then we are not soldiers of Christ. In the gospel reading, Jesus sent his apostles in pairs, two by two. And he said, go, any place you get your ministry set up and they welcome you, may your peace be with them. If they reject you, do not quarrel. Do not shout. Just shake the dust from your feet and you go. It will stand as a testimony. And do not carry extra load. But whatever food or drink they give to you, eat and drink. I will still illustrate again with my grandfather here. You know, before he became a priest, he was already doing his business. He was a very, very rich man. Yes, I know, he will not tell you, but I know it. He told me. <laughs> and he knows the amount of money he used to make. But as he became a priest, he started depending on the offering. That is what we call obedience to going out to evangelize. So if we want to be good and focus soldiers of Christ, we have to be obedient to the authority. Whatever we receive from the people, we are going to be happy and we are going to enjoy it. Wherever they ask us to stay, the priest living here, they may not like to live here. They may want to live somewhere else. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Because it is in obedience that we are going to be connected with the creator and live a holy life, a life of humility. 
And so if we are children of God, please, and we want to be soldiers of Christ, let us obey the authorities. Sometimes I, I wonder why some of us who criticize the Pope, who criticize the bishop, who criticize the priest, it is good to clear your minds. So what do we do? You don't need to criticize. Go and approach them. Many of us used to go to Rome for pilgrimage and prayers and you can book an appointment. You go and talk to the Pope. You can go to London and talk to the bishop if there is something he has said you don't like. You can come and tell the priest whatever he has said you don't like. Because we want to be what? In one mind and one heart in Christ. We are all soldiers of Christ. So if we begin to divide, what happens? We destroy the vision and the mission, which is to, to prove that we are living a life of love. Because that is the summary of the Bible. And when we don't do this, then we cannot be good soldiers of Christ. And one more thing we have to avoid is gossip. It is good for you to go and meet whoever that has said something you don't like, and then you get it from the person directly. Because if you go and start telling someone else, would that person help you? you will not get a solution to the problem. Rather, we will continue to do what? To divide this household of faith. We have to live in love. We need to be bonded. We need to assist one another. I have my own role to play as a priest. You have your own role to play as a lay faithful. But we have one mission and vision. And it's to do what? to speak the truth with love and to be truthful to ourselves. You know, we cannot give what we don't have. If we ask people to repent, then we must have repented. Then we are struggling to do what is right. We are struggling to live a life of holiness. And if we have really accepted this, then what St. Paul says in the second reading will just be what will strengthen us and push us without fear to keep living a good life. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14, he said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. And that explains why Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before you were conceived, I knew you. Before you were born, I had consecrated you. I have appointed you. I have ordained you. I have anointed you to be the prophet of the nation. That is what you and I are. God knew us before we were conceived. So it means that God placed us where we are today. God knew why he placed you in the womb of your own mother here in Canada. And God knew why he placed me in the womb of my own mom in Cameroon. So it doesn't matter where you were born. You have been anointed to do what? To preach the good news. So my dear friends in Christ, let us be proud of our calling. And then let us try to unite. Let us not criticize one another. Let us not gossip. Let us not be envious of the other. You have your gift. The other person has his own gift. Let us bring this gift together in harmony. And we are going to grow in holiness. And then the society will be blessed. May the good Lord bless his words in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
peace be with you.